Hey, this is Taylor from Nuts and Bolts Speed Train, and this is the massive decision tree that we're going to tackle today in this episode of What's the Point of Just Sliding? You can see that I have my ink turned on here. And if I just wide out my screen, a couple of quick notes. First off, I'm going to go slower in this episode. People have asked if I could move a little bit slower and talk about the examples more as we peel back these slides. So that's one thing. The second thing is I'm going to show you two cool examples. The first example is, first off, notice how this decision tree is all based on a number of dates or days passing to get to the end result. So I'm gonna show you a cool tool that I like to use. It allows you to, in Excel, build this kind of date-driven decision tree out based on a date that you input. So this could be a new project that you're starting. Based on a new date, will basically pop out all of the subsequent dates that you need and then sync it here into PowerPoint, which if you manage your different projects, moving between Excel and PowerPoint, is really the holy grail of project management as you can quickly update your slides right before a meeting. I'll show you how to do that. The second cool thing I wanna show you, I've borrowed a slide deck from P-Spice where she shows how you can set up a big complicated project like this. So just imagine that these were my four pieces all right, so maybe one, two, three, four. So if these were my four pieces of my project that I wanted to walk everyone through, I'm gonna show you how you can have that set up so that with a mouse click, you can advance to a specific part of your presentation using the brand new Morph feature here in PowerPoint. So those are the cool things. But before we get complicated, the first question, if this was your slide and you had to update it, the first question you always wanna ask yourself is, what's the point why did you go to so much effort to pull all of this information or better yet what do you hope that someone pulls away from this because the last thing you want is your audience to lose its cool as you try to swing them through all the different elements of your decision tree and the nuts and bolts rule that you can use here to help you start tackling your decision trees like this is the ruler especially as your graphics get more and more complicated so if this was the slide that I was trying to boil down to a point for, the ruler test is simply to float in a ruler that guides you from point A to point B. And I know someone's gonna ask me how I did that, so let me just escape out really quick. So I built this ruler using a rectangle, some lines, and some text boxes. The way to float a ruler in like this is to simply build it on one slide, and then on the slide before it, paste it in and rotate it to a different location. So I've put it on the outside of my slide at this point. If you then add a from the transitions tab, a morph transition in PowerPoint 2016 or later, and you then run this. As you move from one slide to the next, the morph transition will rotate that object from one slide to the next. And the reason that a ruler is important here is it forces you to move from one side of your complicated decision tree to the next. So in this case, this forces us to go event one, event two, event five, event 12, all the way to the end result that should be the most uh, relevant to the, your audience, all right? This is what your audience cares about. This is what you wanna tell them about. So for example, if we are sued, all right? So maybe that's the event one. If we're sued here, you know, this could happen, that could happen, but most likely it's gonna proceed for whatever reason. You know, after that, one, two, all these different events could happen, but we're gonna file article 52. Then we're gonna come to event number 12, because we've done this a million times, and this is the event that we're shooting for. And what that does for you is it makes all of the other stuff on your slide, all right, this might be 100% true, but it's irrelevant to the point of our presentation. This might be all true, but it's again, irrelevant to the point of our information, which if I just rotate that down with a morph graphic again, you can see this starts to become a pretty manageable process that you can work with. But even here, you again wanna ask yourself, what is the point of this slide? Why am I now showing this sequence? And maybe, the point of this slide is to distribute amongst your team a list of contacts for the different milestones as this project progresses. So we're gonna have these different milestone events that are gonna happen. We wanna show the days or the dates between those points, which if I just morph that into a different slide, you know, here is that same slide now stacked up. I have some contact names here on the far right, the events, and the whole point of this slide is to push across and maybe instead of days, if you built this in Excel, you'd actually have dates. All right, so that's one way to do this. And just a quick point here, if you're gonna add milestone highlights here like this, I really urge you to try to keep these to a minimum. All right, you probably have an entire memorandum full of information about each one of these milestone event highlights. I'd really try to keep these 
as tight as possible. Don't just add stuff to add stuff. All right, so that would be all the way down the line. Now, even at this point, you know, maybe this is still too much information for you. And maybe after going through this exercise, you realize that this is the entire point of your slide. If someone sues us, we really just have 420 days before XYZ happens, which maybe this is enough for you. And you could add another title down below. You could add some information here on the right, and maybe you could even add a calendar here. But again, don't just add information because you can. Really try to focus on adding things that are relevant. If we come back to our decision tree, and this time I throw in two rulers, and let's say this time we're going to work our way down to result number eight using the office timeline plus add-in, this is what that entire graphic could look like, and this is actually date-driven. So based on dates that are input into Excel, I'll show you that in a second, that pushes all the way across. And if I just come out of presentation mode, the cool thing about a graphic like this, this is 100% built uh, with PowerPoint shapes, but with this office timeline add-in, you have a bunch of cool little features, right? You can push your time band lower, everything automatically rotates. If I change the milestone shape, notice the diamonds down here. If I click the flag, it automatically updates, which is super cool. But look at this. This is what I really wanna point out. This is an old slide. You can see this is 50%, this is 50%, these are 0%. Even though my today marker, which is based on my computer date, is way up here. So if this was your slide in any other way, you would have to come in and update this, you know, change your milestones, et cetera. But if you build this in Excel first, and let me just flip to Excel. So here in Excel, this is what that entire graphic that we've boiled our way down to looks like. And I have this set up so that if I change the date, so if I change this to March 15th, all right, all of the dates will automatically update. So if this was uh, a client project, uh, a lawsuit or something, I could basically input a date, have all of my different dates update, which if I then flip back to PowerPoint, here in PowerPoint from the Office Timeline Plus Ribbon tab, if I had imported that Excel spreadsheet, which I did, I could then just before a meeting click sync. You're gonna see everything that's updated in the underlying Excel spreadsheet. You can just scroll down. All right, I'm just gonna click accept all, accept all, I'll click finish. The add-in goes to work and automatically, if I hit Shift F5, updates all of that information for you. So here I just basically fill these into 100%, but you can see now this graphic will automatically update with that Excel spreadsheet, which I think is super cool. Now another cool thing you can do here, I have a world map, and I'm sure you've seen this before where people put all of their locations here and they put all of their locations there and they try to like, you know, have flags all over the place and their slide just becomes this huge decision tree of locations. Instead of doing that, if you hook this up with a morph graphic, so this is from P-Spice's Spicy Slide Pack, this is set up so that if you want to talk about your locations, all right, here in Asia, for example, this is just a morph transition, which then you could, you know, have your little, your little places pop up that you want to talk about. If you then click another continent, you could rotate down to Africa. So this is a way that you could build a title slide, and if you just click a blank part of the screen, it rotates back to this world view. So just imagine, instead of the, this being the world, this was, again, our event one, our event two, event three, event four, event five, et cetera. And now, as you click through, if someone wants to talk about the event down here, you zoom into that space, you could then have your, your different pieces pop up. You could have a whole sequence of slides that come right after this talking about you know, whatever your event Australia is. So that is, if I just hit escape out of this, so you can see what this looks like. This is just slide set up with the morph transition. You could also find this in the spicy slide pack, which as you click these different pieces, right, you're gonna rotate to the different parts of the world. And again, that's PowerPoint doing the seamless transition for you. So that's how you can begin tackling complicated decision trees using the ruler and some other tools like the office timeline added in the morph graphic for some other new ideas and inspiration. And again, this is still an experimental YouTube series, so please let me know what you think by either leaving a comment below or hitting the thumbs up button. I'm only committing to two more episodes at this point, so your opinion counts. For links to the resources I talked about in this video and some other cool speed training stuff, check out the links below in the description box. This is Taylor from Nuts of Old Speed Training, and I'll see you at happy hour.